The one thing I wish I knew before buying my first lens is how the size of your camera sensor affects your focal length. And depending on that sensor size, you'll have to consider something called crop factor. So in this video, I'll break down crop factor and help you figure out which focal length lenses you should get for your camera. All right, so there's three of the most common sensor sizes, and the first one is going to be full frame. Next is APS-C, which is a slightly smaller sensor than full frame. And lastly is Micro Four Thirds, which is the smallest sensor size of the three. Now, for example, the Sony FX3 that I'm shooting on right now has a full frame sensor. While cameras like the Fujifilm X series or Sony A6000 series have smaller APS-C size sensors, and cameras like my Blackmagic Pocket 4K have smaller Micro Four Thirds sensors. So to understand crop factor, let's just take a 24 millimeter lens. It's going to capture the full field of view, so the full 24 millimeter focal length, and it's going to have no crop factor. And if you take that same 24 millimeter lens and put it on an APS-C size sensor, it's going to have a 1.5 times crop so the image is going to be punched in a bit more. So if you take 24 millimeters and multiply it times 1.5, you're going to have roughly around a 36 millimeter field of view. And if we put that same 24 millimeter lens on an even smaller micro four thirds sensor, we're going to have a two times crop factor and we're going to have a 48 millimeter field of view, which is why that same 24 millimeter will look so punched in compared to a full frame sensor, which will show the full field of view and have no crop factor. And the reason this is all super important because say if maybe you want to film an establishing shot for your video or film, 24 millimeters will be a perfect wide angle lens to use on a full frame camera. But if you're filming on an APS-C sensor or smaller, that 24 millimeter lens is not going to give you a proper wide angle shot. So in order to compensate for that, you want to get something like a 16 millimeter lens. Or let's say you have a micro four thirds sensor. Again, that 24 millimeter is going to look super tight because it's going to be a 48 millimeter full frame equivalent. So in that case, you'll want to use a 12 millimeter focal length because 12 times two equals 24 millimeters. Or say maybe you want an ultra wide shot like this. I'm filming at 17 millimeters on my full frame Sony FX3. 16 to 17 millimeters is a perfect ultra wide for a full frame camera. However, if I switch to the APS-C crop mode, this is what the same 17 millimeter focal length will look like on a smaller APS-C size sensor. So in that case, if you want an ultra wide focal length on an APS-C lens, you're gonna wanna look for a focal length around 10 millimeters. Another important thing to consider in the look of your image is background blur. So let's say a 50 millimeter lens at f2.8 on a full frame sensor, this will have a pretty nice blurry background. And maybe you're shooting on an APS-C size sensor, but you still want that 50 millimeter focal length. So you pick up something like a 35 millimeter F2.8 lens, which is gonna have a similar 50 millimeter field of view. However, one thing you'll notice is that your background isn't gonna look as blurry. So if you do wanna get a blurrier background on an APS-C or smaller sensor, the solution to this is to get a faster lens, like a 35 millimeter F1.8, for example. And if you don't know how to use Aperture, don't worry, I have a tutorial right up here. And I know this might seem a bit confusing at first, so I'm just going to recommend you some lenses. And I've been following a two lens rule, which is get one ultra wide zoom and one standard zoom. And I'm still following this rule to this day. For a full frame camera, like my Sony FX3, for example, I have a Tamron 17 to 28, which will cover all of my ultra wide and wide angle needs, whether it's filming content for YouTube, Instagram, or even real estate and event videos. Then I have my Sigma 24 to 70 for my wide to tight end. For an APS-C size camera like a Sony a6700, I get something like a Tamron 11 to 20 for all my ultra wide and wide angles, and then a Sigma 18 to 50 for all my standard wide and tight shots. Now, if you have a Micro Four Thirds sensor like my BMPCC 4K, for example, I'll get the Olympus 8 to 25 millimeter for all my ultra wide to standard shots, and a Lumix 12 to 35 millimeter for all my standard wide to tight shots. Also, one important thing to note if you do have a full frame sensor is to make sure that your lens was designed for full frame sensors. Otherwise, if you buy a lens that was designed for an APS-C size sensor, it's going to have a vignette, meaning you're going to see these black edges around the corners of your frame because that lens was designed for a smaller sensor. All right, everyone. So that is how sensor size and crop factor work. I know it might seem a lot at first. So if you do have any questions, feel free to let me know in the comments down below. If you do want to see more tutorials and gear reviews, feel free to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.